and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some four color legends. That's right, we have a pretty crazy looking donation deck here and honestly it looks pretty sweet. So we have a Kethis the Hidden Hand deck, which this is a card that I haven't played yet from M20. Um, so definitely been meaning to. I uh, need to make an, just an Abzan deck around Kethis, but this is a good place to start. It'll be a, a fun deck to play. So we have a three mana three four, which is a perfectly reasonable stats. You know, nothing wrong with that. Um, that also makes all of our legendary spells cost one less. And that is going to be pretty key. All like, you know, our deck is just filled with legendary spells. And so all of them costing one less is going to be really nice. You know, we have like these Fibble Thips here, which a two mana one one draw card. Nah, it's not, that's fine. You know, it's not, not spectacular, but that's fine. But how about if you make it one mana? You make it just one mana, um, then, you know, one mana, one, one ETB draw card. Now we're like really talking one mana as Kanta. That's pretty nice and so on, you know, like just reducing the costs of all these things. So that's going to be pretty awesome, especially when we're playing like Mox Amber, you know, making, you know, reducing costs also with Mox Amber. It's a really good pairing, but that's not all. Whenever you have some legendary cards in your graveyard, you can exile two of them in order to be able to cast other um, legendary cards in your graveyard. We'll see how much we we really use that ability, but I'm sure we'll use that some. You know, that's that's not nothing. Um, but yes, yeah, so we have Kethis in a blue deck, basically. <laughs> Even though it's an Absand card, we're kind of like, you know, a blue-based control uh, with all these legends because Narset and Teferi are just so, and of course other Teferi, like these cards are just so good. Um, and, you know, Fibblethip's a pretty good uh, two-mana legend as well. So to tie it all together, we got Othakaya in here, which we know how, you know, like Othakaya, we've seen that with uh, Esper Hero, um, being able to to play that, use your Teferi to bounce it back, play it some more, gain just a lot of life, stay alive. And then hopefully our bigger things take over. We got one Druidic Vow <clears throat> that could be pretty sweet to put a whole bunch of stuff into play. We got Ruinous Blast, which is which is better in this format than it was in last format, because last format everybody was playing all the planeswalkers. Now people are kind of moving away from the planeswalkers. You know, we have like these Risen Reef decks um, that have like their Cavalier Thorns and a bunch of you know non bunch of ramp creatures that are not legends. So maybe we get to Ruinous Blast away a lot of things. A Shalida to kind of protect our stuff. I've been super impressed with Shalai in this format. She seems underpowered considering all the, the good creatures and, and spells and everything that we have these days, but still probably fine having one in there. And of course, Kefnet is just, is very good because, you know, four, being a 4-5 is a whole lot better than being a 3-4. And Kefnet can keep coming back. If We're not going to reveal spells too often with Kefnet's ability, but any time that we do, it'll be really impactful, especially revealing Druidic Vow. <laughs> that is pretty crazy. But yeah, let's give this a try. We got four color legends. We'll kind of see how our mana works out. We'll see if it does. This should be a fun one. All right, we're gonna head on over to our traditional constructed queue. Pay our thousand gold. Y'all know the drill. We'll, we'll play till we win five or lose two. Whichever one happens first. What's our first hand look like? Okay, we're just playing Esper. This is just Esper Control. There's nothing crazy about this deck. Primeval's Glorious Rebirth and a Tamio. Okay. That's some um, late game power right there. People should really stop putting Vicious Conquistador in their Vampire decks. Play Vampire of the Dire Moon. Better card. No! Oh, uh, that was close. 
That was close. Whew. Gotta get Soren out of here. All right, no Soren, but a Champion of Dusk. Get that thing out of here. Don't have any green mana. Golgari Queen, we're an Esper deck. Don't think we need you. So a little unfortunate here with like you know the Knight of the Ebon Legion being able to pump, stay alive from an Othakaya. So I'm gonna I'll go with the time waster and bounce the Ebon Legion. And then presumably they'll send one point over at the time waster. And then we'll be able to Othakaya the knight. I guess they still have just the activated ability. This is, this is my plan's not even working. What am I what am I doing? They still have the activated ability they can do. All right, maybe I should just throw the Kaya the Conquistador. <laughs> Man, Tony Hawk Pro Skater was like a a sweet game for original PlayStation way back in the day. I used to play some Tony Hawk games. Y'all were playing for N64? Yeah, I had... I had PlayStation, so I had it on there. So, yeah, that's how it was back in the day. Like, your... Your parents would be like, all right, we'll get you one... One video game console. Do you want the PlayStation or the N64? You get one. You don't really have both. So, a lot of people were playing one or the other. We kind of need Urza's Ruinous Blast. That's the card that we really need. Well then. Of course, the problem is we're going to be dead before we play it, but we have it. I don't know how we're going to stay alive. Uh, we're one mana short if we draw Mox Amber, though, too, for playing Kethys, then Ruinous Blast. We're one mana short. Because we have to chump block the Knight, of course. We can't just take this. I need to draw Fibblethip and Mox Amber. Hmm. Oh, that's true, because the, the Kethys makes it cost four. So, yeah, if we would have drawn Mox Amber, we would have had it. That's true. That's a good point. Yeah. So, yeah, Mox Amber was the draw. Darn. Um. Yeah. I can, like, Teferi bounce the Othakaya replay it, but obviously that doesn't kill th this thing. Darn. Alright, so Legion's End, Cry of the Carnariums, Kaya's Wrath, Lyra Dawnbringer, Narset, pretty slow... I trim some of these things to I mean time ravelers is not not good here. Just take out the time ravelers. 
The best thing Time Rattler does is bounce out the Kaya, of course. But we'll just we'll just take him out. Is that too many fives? Like do I do I need vial offering? No, this is not a Gideon matchup. This is we're gonna be we're on the, the defense we're on the we're on the defensive here. Gideon is a card when you're on when you're trying to be aggressive. Yeah, it's a fairy five, definitely kinda of slow too. But at least actually gets rid of things. And also wins games like after you know, if we stabilize with other cards to fair like to fairy five puts the puts games away. Yeah, Othakai is legendary. We can't... So, legendary sorceries you can only play if you have a legendary creature or planeswalker in play. And legendary enchantments don't do anything to play legendary sorceries. Otherwise, they would have been a lot... Like, they'd be a lot better, you know, with Ascanta and everything. It'd be a lot easier to cast the legendary sorceries and you'd see more play. So, of course, Breeding Pool, Kai's Wrath... Not the bestest of combinations. That's all right. There are definitely yeah, there are legendary lands in Magic, but it's not at any in Standard that I am aware of. But yeah, there there are definitely ones in there. There have been legendary lands printed. There's a, a whole bunch of them, but not any for Standard. Oh, sure, if you want to talk about Ascanta the Sunken Ruin, Legendary Land and Standard, all right, there you go. That'll do. Yeah, the, the cycle of enchantments that flip into lands, or transform, sorry. Flip is the incorrect term. We certainly have Noxious Grasp here. But then they're not Noxious Grasp being Lyra Dawnbringer. That's really cool having one man as Kanta. And that was a that was a cool Kethis animation too. I liked it, that scroll. The pen is mightier than the crown. Boo. Card's kind of too good not to play or not to keep. Time to step you know, we I can certainly me. dig for a land next turn. But especially how we were like kind of stabilizing, they don't have very many cards. I mean, we just got to keep this to fairy here. The dusk. It was probably going to die anyway. Hmm.
I know my response. You need to slow down. What happens if I trickster Cranko when it attacks? Will the ability still work? Yeah, because yes, whenever it attacks, uh, it's a it's a triggered ability, so it will trigger and it'll still happen because the trickster doesn't stop the ability from triggering. So yeah, the the ability will still go on the stack and and resolve. I do really like the lifelink that Soren brings, but I don't think this is a, a Soren matchup because we don't have very many creatures here. I think this is it's. I have, think Soren's better in the sideboard for playing against like Esper to pick off a, like like their Teferis and Narsets that go down to like one loyalty, and plus like we bring in like the, like whenever we bring in the heroes, bring in the Soren, is like, so we have more targets to bring back, kind of thing. All right, we got a win. Just one game though. Got to got to get game three on the draw. I'm feeling pretty good about it. Goodish. Yeah, this is the Lazav avatar. Lazav is from the Demir uh, Guild bundle. But from what I've heard from other people, the guild bundles are no longer in the store and no longer purchasable, which is silly, to say the least. Hmm. This may not pan out, but it could. There we go. All right, just need one more black source now. Preferably a green black land would be perfect. But yeah, you know, I'm gonna want a Kaiser. Like, Kaiserat seems like an important card to have in this matchup. Ow. Oh, Dread Presence is awesome. I think we just we just got done playing Dread Presence in the deck that we just played. It was really good. This is a prime day for justice. I believe Not sure how we're beating this Gideon over here. Hmm. Oh, we have Golgari Queen. Never mind. Figure it out. This other guy, this thing, Golgari Queen, the Gideon. And then we'll see by turn five if we draw another black source for Kaya's Wrath. Obviously, this harbor isn't casting Kaya's Wrath, so I'm not going to be playing it the next turn. I will lend you my strength. Down to 12. Shock down to 10. Yuck. No, not another creature. Ugh. Wherever 
I go. Smile to the shadows. My best. For now. So they can hit me down to two here if they just attack me and just ignore Vraska. Wait, they can just kill me with the, the plus one. Yeah, I'm just dead. They just activate Knight. That's nine. And then the Soren deal three is 12. So yeah, they just have lethal here. Very good hands. A mighty curse. That they had. One drop knight. Knight, Lieutenant, Gideon, and then Soren Knight. It's a good one. Hey, Rosalie, yeah. Yeah, that Sultai Flash deck is that's that deck's legit. I'll I'll be playing again on Sunday. Uh, I'm gonna be doing Sundays I do like rank up Sundays where I play um, some of like my best decks to like play them in Mythic, see how much we rank up on Sunday. And so yeah, I'll be playing Sultai Flash, Gruel Midrange. Um I think I want to play Grixis Control again. And what was the other deck I was gonna play on Sunday? Yours. Well, at least I'm not dead. That's cool. Oh, I was going to probably play the Team or Elemental deck that I haven't played yet. Darn. Why did I have to draw a Sanctum Seeker? So obviously they didn't have that last turn, otherwise they probably would have played it last turn. I think that was their card they drew. It's a good draw. Hmm. Yeah, I'm stuck on black mana. It's gonna happen. Four color deck. Yeah, our our opponent's not a big fan of the of sacrificing their vampires to do three. That's okay. Yep, we already played mono black control. It was it was honestly a really sweet deck. Really liked it. Um, it'll be up on the YouTube channel in about ten minutes or so. If you want to catch that, there's the the link to the YouTube channel, youtubecom slash MTG. It's still uploading, maybe like 10, 15 minutes. Of course, it starts off in like 360p, and then it takes like takes some time to for YouTube to process it and get to be better. But I don't think I want this one. Not being on the play, it's just so likely that we don't draw lands. This is certainly a mulligan. Okay. So, breeding pool out. And overgrown tomb. More vampires. <laughs> Not really beating this.
So I don't know. Maybe they maybe they don't draw land for a little bit. You know, Zealot's something they can play that also replaces itself. The whole three mana Soren put in champion is going to be like impossible to beat. Maybe they don't draw don't draw the third land. I don't know. I mean, we're we're just not not winning this. This isn't a fight you can win. When I have one like one card that does anything I've with the Teferi, and that's a card that I'm sideboarding out. Not very good. No, it's not all vampires in constructed. It's just two matches in a row. With it. Doesn't mean it's all vampires. We played four matches earlier with the mono black deck and saw zero vampires. We just got them back to back. So do I net mana with playing Mox Amber if it costs one less? It costs like negative one. Gain a colorless mana by playing it. Yeah, I can tap Mox right away. With, well, you have to have a legendary creature or planeswalker that has colors in play, and we do. But there's just nothing to do with it. This deck that we're playing only plays 24 lands, which is low. I would think they would probably want a 25th, so... You know, having 8 lands... Um, and 13 cards... Isn't really ideal. But that's where we're at. Basically, you know, like we're 24, but with the 2 Mox Ambers. I guess you do. So we could draw Urza's Ruinous Blast here. Leave before I make you disappear. Being ruthless has its rewards. Urza's Ruinous Blast. No. I only have two legends in my graveyard. I have to two legendary cards. I have to exile two legendary cards in the graveyard, and then I could cast a different legendary card. It's not like I can exile these two and then play anything. I have to have another card that's legendary. Play an infinite combo deck with Kethis. It takes so many clicks. It didn't seem feasible for a stream deck. Yeah, there Yeah, there are some infinite stuff you can do with like Teshar and Mox Amber and I don't know all that kind of stuff, but yeah, it's just so many clicks. But the those kind of decks that I've seen so far.
Doesn't seem like we have too good of a matchup against vampires so far. We're going to be winning one out of four games after this game. But the vampire deck's really good. It really is. An unfortunate cat. Where's Ruinous Blast? Only time will tell. Hey, Sonic Bob. Thanks for that sub there. Wow. For a second month now, you're amazing. Let's get some hype boats in the chat. All right, our th oh, fourth sub of the day. Oh, it was down one. Fourth sub of the day. Yeah, that was not... We were really not fortunate with how many lands we drew there. I wonder if Hero of Precinct 1 would actually be good. Maybe I'm supposed to play Hero in this matchup. Yeah, we only have 24 lands. Like, this is not... We do not have very many lands in this deck. You know, like, we were stuck on lands before. It was... Considering the two lands that we put to the bottom with our Mold of Five, that was pretty insane. If we play Hero... Just get us, you know, chump blockers and everything. Is that reasonable? No, most of the cards we're going to be keeping. All right, let's give us another try. Hey, what's up, track team? Day's going pretty good. The mono black control we just played was a lot of fun. Really enjoyed that deck. And now we got three donation decks that we're playing here. So yeah, Mox Amber doesn't won't add mana until we already have these things in. So, you know, we're looking at so it doesn't do anything. So we're looking at a six card hand of having these two lands and then these. Okay, we can try this. As Canta Discovery. Certainly help us. Um I think I'm gonna actually just keep Discovery. So I, th I think we need to keep one of Discovery or Ascanta. So I think we're going to want these other three cards in our two lands. So it's like, which one do we want to play on turn two and try to get to, like, Kethys and then, like, these other things? And I think Discovery does a better job of finding white mana immediately. Ascanta is, you know, a slow burn over time. Hmm. Maybe it is Ascanta. I mean, I guess we need white mana immediately because all the other cards are have white mana so we have to we have to dig pretty let's maybe keep discovery yeah discovery is a one shot but it 
you know, gets rid of a lot of cards right away, which is kind of what we need, because we're going to need white mana the very next turn. Well, obviously they were going to have Duress on turn one, so I needed to keep both of them. I need to keep Escante and Discovery, obviously. Okay. Good draw. You would have put Lyra back? Is Yeah, keeping Lyra is definitely greedy, but... Remember, Lyra would only cost... She only costs four mana with Kethys, so like we would be able to like curve... Kethys into Lyra if we'd have the other white source. Well, if we would have had, a, like, you know, our other card, our Kanto or Discovery would have been able to play it here, but I'm relying on our deck drawing a land here and playing these things, so I'll just get Othakai and play. It's, I know it's not the best, killing a Dusk Legion Zealot. Okay, they didn't have a great follow-up. Come on, draw land. No. Pain is weakness, leaving the body. Oh, where's our lands? We couldn't save any of the lands from last game. Keep them, play them. Play them now. Alive for alive. At least our opponent has not had a very good hand. They were not not having anything to follow this up. Thought Erasure is probably not hitting anything. Like they've they've had two turns to uh, two turns to do something. I don't really want to Othakaya either of those either. So I guess we're just going with this. on what's about to happen. So emblems at minus nine. Legion's Landing only flips whenever three creatures attack. Vampires is in a deck that's known for having haste creatures. Yeah, our opponent's the one that flooded out really bad this game. It was us last game, now it's them this game. But that's a real bad flood considering all of the lands they're playing. Like they're probably playing like 22. So that's eight of them. Prepare for battle. Hey, Casey, thank, thank you. Huh. That 
You're not long for this world. Shall I connect? Yep. And there we go. You have Vraska's minus nine. If you're not too familiar with it, it's whenever any of our creatures do damage to them at all, they lose the game. And so, yeah, we just do the minus nine. Shall I does damage to them, they lose the game. I guess them playing Gideon does make this more appealing. All right, we'll throw one out here. <clears throat> it's just like our it's like a removal spell that doesn't hit Sanctum Seeker or Soren or Champion of Dusk or Knight of the Ebon Legion, like basically all their good threats. But I guess Gideon and Legion's Lieutenant. That's kind of it. It's only yeah, it's only combat damage. So you can't you can't have your own creatures do combat damage to yourself. I'm gonna take out the Druidic Vow for the Noxious Grass. Druidic Vow is a fun card. It's like really cool with it, just a ton of mana, but like it's the games that we're losing, we're not gonna have like a whole bunch of mana and have legends in play and then cast that, you know, having the Druidic Vow in our opener is kind of like a mulligan in this um, in this matchup. What would you think about a two-man enchantment that says whenever a creature enters the battlefield, you may make it a legendary creature? Or maybe a sword in the stone artifact that you tap legendary until you use it again. If for the most part, the like an enchantment and artifact like that wouldn't, there wouldn't really be a reason to play it. But I guess the legendary sorceries could help them out. But I don't, I don't think, I don't think those cards, those card kind of cards, you know, they, they of course wouldn't really have any purpose in limited and probably not really in standard. Uh, I wish we had green mana. I want to keep this. But we don't have green mana. So it's like we can't even cast cast cat this, but I you know, like these like having good mana with Legion's end. This is a feel bad mulligan. So still no green mana, but I'll keep this. And Mox Amber never like actually does anything, so we'll get rid of that. Oh yeah, there's the blue there's a blue ley line, ley line of singularity that makes all non land permanents are legendary. See, that's a cool ley line. I like that one. Mox doesn't add just any color, you know, like we can't use the Mox to be able to get green to cast these things. That's not how Mox Amber works. Opponent smart, growing the Knight of the Ebon Legion. Smart play. I just have to cast the discovery the next turn. I 
Bibletip's just gonna be able to be able to block more damage later, probably than just the three. I don't want to incentivize my opponent to pay for life. Oh right, they don't have to. All right, well, just gotta kill the other knight. Yeah, if I if I block the knight, then they just pay for life with the Danto Vanguard anyway to grow the knight. Green mana would be our best possible draw, of course, like being able to play Vraska, killing the knight, having the Fibblethip to block for Vraska, and also our Othakaya over here. That would be ideal. Okay. All right, now, since I can just say what I want to draw, I guess. Now we want to draw Cry of the Carnarium. We got two Cry of the Carnariums. That would be ideal. Cry of the Carnarium. I think I'm blocking with Fibblethip here no matter what. Certainly if they both attack me, I'm blocking. Ugh, gross. That was not good. So playing Kethis. <sighs> playing Kethis can block, you know, like one Vanguard and we can gain one life, but then we take six. So that's not going to be good enough. So we're going to need to. We're going to need to use these discoveries. As long as we win, Let's go ahead and sack this thing first. Gross. Not using green mana. All right, well we just got to find Cry the Carnarium. Darn it! That was the card I needed. That's why I wanted to sacrifice first before before casting Discovery, because then this would you know we would have had more mana. Like we would have had five mana available to play this, but it was just one card, one card deep. We needed one card earlier. Uh, yeah, I guess this keeps us alive. I guess we're still alive. That'll do. Put us up to seven. Please don't do any damage to us. We can't handle anything. We can't handle, like, we can handle literally nothing. <laughs> no! I have not survived millennia to stand How'd you make us now? think that we could maybe win? Thank you. Hmm. 
Yep, they sacrificed the vampire. They they finally found out that they could sacrifice a vampire. So I think so maybe you know like maybe our cyborg needs more more early creature removal than what we have. More legions ends kind of thing. That's what it certainly feels like. We could play one more. Let's just play one more just regular match with the deck. Because just, you know, two matches for a donation deck isn't very much, but it was the exact same match. So that's not too good. So let's play another one. So we don't do anything unless we draw white mana. I mean, I guess we could not draw, you know, draw any mana for this. It's just not worth keeping a hand like that. Yeah, Matthew, have you played have you played that deck very much? Basically, the question is, like, can you actually get away with having nothing that costs one and two mana except for Land War Elf? And, like, nothing else that even costs two mana? Like, don't you think we should just have, we need, like, Paradise Druid instead of Get to Paradise? If you don't have one of your very, your four Llanowar Elves, then you're waiting to turn three, and then turn three you have to decide between Risen Reef and Gift of Paradise. That's not really a good decision to have. Basically, I can't I can't figure out a reason to play Gift of Paradise over Paradise Druid, besides like Paradise Druid dying to Star of Extinction. Ooh, Mox Amber actually did something. First time ever. Yeah, I could go with the leaf the leaf druid. Uh we don't have white mana. I guess I needed to keep this Goblet Shrine. Sorry, I was looking at that other deck. I didn't realize that we didn't have white mana at all that I, need, that I needed white mana still. I should have kept that Goblet Shrine. Yeah, I could play Leafkin Druid also. Since you're playing all the elementals, Leaf Kren Druid is certainly reasonable. Just have to play one of those instead of Par instead of Get to Paradise. My deck is punishing me so hard for getting rid of this God of the Shrine. It's unbelievable.
All right, I'm going to get rid of that thing first before then I play Time Raveler, Bounce Kefnet. The next turn. I guess if I if I would have gone Sorry, Ket this first, I don't have to shock. I'll protect I wasn't sure if I really wanted to play Ket this yet. All right, but yeah. Sweet animation. Our deck may have too many blue sources. We've never struggled with blue. We, different times we struggled with white, black, and green. Never blue. Don't worry. I got this. Right on schedule. Legendary stuff being in our graveyard is really not that bad of a bad for us with the Kethis. see uh pro well no probably not a chromatic lantern that would probably be too slow of a card to have i've got it do you though All right, we scared our opponent. Hey, Sleepy Aussie. Top of the morning to you. It's the first time undefeated at FNM. That is awesome, using the Golgari Stompy deck. Sweet, good job. Yeah. Way to go. All right, we'll play Mortify. So our opponent's playing, you know, Reanimate deck. It looked, it may have looked like our opponent wasn't really doing anything, but that's kind of because we had that, like that Thought Erasure for the Bond Revival was definitely important. Um, ugh, Runus Blast, not very necessary here. Them having, you know, Dracuseth. Kefnet for their creatures. Don't think Othakaya is particularly great. Let's trim one. But yeah, I want to exile the graveyard with Ashiok. Um, I could definitely see playing Gideon. Certainly considering Gideon. Maybe Gideon over Golgari Queen? Yeah. Let's go with Gideon over Golgari Queen. Don't think Golgari Queen's minus three ability is as gonna be as useful here. Good Esper hand. Thought Erasure is a messed up card. Just gonna just gets you wins. Yeah, Doctor Grendel. 
I don't know. Yeah, I'll I'll let you know. We'll just take the reveler. Our hand's not any good. You know, against discard. Yeah, you know, like we're just we'll just trade off hands here, that's fine. They should ignore the thought erasure and take the other two, I think. I think. Well, they're letting us keep Mortify. Darn. Hey, Talrand. Doing good. Doing good. All right, let me get the thumbnails ready here. Whoa, we got we got to keep Teferi. Cool. No, not Drake, you Seth. All right, Narsa, you're probably dead anyway. Focus and just keep an open mind. Yep, there's our lands. Meditate and prepare. All right, can we rip rip a blue or a black land? Trust me. Get the perfects. Thank me later. That's more like it. No. Perfect. Thanks there, Matthew. Ugh, that'd been great to have last last turn. Let's try this. Ranzino with the sub. Hey, what's up, Ranzino? Thanks for that sub there for the third month. Love it. Storm getting those hype boats in there. Awesome. Thanks, Ranzino. All right. Did not cast chart, of course. I have Narset. Here goes that makes thing. sense. All right, so I don't need to actually thought erasure away that chart, of course. So I was gonna, I was gonna wait like another turn, because like they couldn't, they couldn't have like fifth land and bond revival there. Yeah, you know, they couldn't draw both. With, so I was gonna wait another turn for the thought erasure. All right, so a better game there. All right, so that's our four color legends deck. As far as stuff to change with the deck, it's kind of hard to say. So obviously we had a weakness to <clears throat> to vampires. Losing our matches against vampires. I mean, maybe it's just another Legion's End. Or even just... I wouldn't mind, like, a main deck Legion's End in here, honestly. Like, do we really need three Fibble Thips? The Fibble Thips were, like, okay, but, like, not spectacular. I guess we kind of do. You want... 
you do want a lot of legends for Kethys, right? Like you want legends in your graveyard to be able to get rid of and stuff. But what if we put a Legion's End in the main? I've been just so happy with Legion's End. Uh, you know, I've been, been putting more and more in main decks these days. Invictus! Thanks for that support. Glad you're enjoying the stream. Thank you so much. Yep. Yep, I'll take yep. I'll take care of that, Matthew. Um So yeah, I, I wanna mind having a Legion's End here, because like we we have like some kinda some neat late game stuff and we can do some like pretty cool things with all these like you know, we can we can do some grinding with this deck, is what I was trying to say. So like but what are we taking out? I think to get a Legion's End in here, I do not want to cut a discovery. I think It'd be one of either one of the Fibble Thips or, the, or one of the Mox Ambers, to be honest. Mox Amber was frequently one of our very worst cards. And I think drawing two Mox Ambers would be pretty, pretty bad. So I think we just actually I think just cut a Mox Amber. And you still have access to one where it can it can do some neat things. It's like a mana source you can grab off of Narset, which is cool and and everything and you know, it's it can do it can do some stuff. But it's not something that it's not something I want to draw a second. And I think maybe that's it. Uh other thing is, put the Kaya's the Kaya's Wrath in here, but it, it turned out that casting Kaya's Wrath was kind of hard with us having four lands that don't cast it at all in our twenty-four land deck. So having like double white and double black was actually kind of difficult. So I think we'd have to replace Kaya's Wrath to be honest. Um, I'm not I'm not in love with like time wipe. Or Cleansing Nova, you know, something like that. I'm not in love with those cards. Them costing five mana also. Could be another Ruinous Blast, but the problem is is against like the those aggressive creature decks that are like that are really aggressive, it's it's hard to have your legend in play and then also then cast Ruinous Blast. So maybe like a settle. Just settle. We're not playing like other instants, so like playing playing just one instant is kind of awkward. Maybe it's just a sideboard ruinous blast. Yeah, it's a sideboard ruinous blast. So two just really small changes, but that should help us out in the aggro matchups. Uh, Mana-wise... I kind of hated these blue-green lands, actually. More like green-white. Uh, green-white's not casting like Thought Erasure, though. There's only 10 white sources in here. No wonder why it was difficult. So there's only 10 white and 8 green. We do need more green and white. Hmm. So blue has 4, 6, 8, 12, 14, 16. Yeah, it's a lot of blue. And black has 2, 4, 6, 10, 12, 14. <clears throat> so probably needs a little bit less blue. Like one less blue, another wider, another green. 
probably. What would this deck look like with Thran Temporal Gateway? Basically, Thran Temporal Gateway wouldn't do anything. You have to spend four mana to put in a legend, a legendary permanent with Thran Temporal Gateway, and the only so like if you basically it's just a dead card. It just doesn't it doesn't do it. Like the only thing it can possibly do is put Teferi into play for a mana cheaper. Otherwise, it's like mana neutral with these things. You're spending more mana with these. And it just goes completely against what what Kathis is about of making your legendary spells cost less mana. It's just it'd just be a useless card basically. Um, yes, maybe maybe something with the side, with the mana base, but there we go. I would make those two little changes there, um, and I would probably try to fit in another green or another white source, trimming on blue. But that's four color legends. All right, so uh, if you're watching the video later on YouTube, hope you enjoyed this deck. You know, we didn't get to play it a ton, uh, you know, having the, the two matches against vampires there, but it was a pretty sweet-looking deck, though, still. Um, it does need more wrath, more wrath compassion. I agree with that. Um, but there we go. Yeah, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe buttons over there on YouTube if you're watching this video over there. But thank you so much for watching, and I will see you for the next video.